Yes, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Tales of Heroes. Episode number 35, sued, sued. Episode number 35 here on uh, Tales of Heroes, we have Rogers versus X Interp, the Battle of the Senior Shoutcast mods at GameReplays.org. So uh, if you haven't checked out GameReplays.org, do these guys a favor. Listen to this, if you listen watch this show, check them out at GameReplays.org. There's a lot of people that do what we do, and I, I could be, you know, sending people to competitors, as it were, but there's a lot of people that do what we do here, except they do it in the form of what's called uh, shoutcasts. It's not really shoutcasts, but it is, in, in a sense. And what they do is they take the thing and they do an audio commentary the same way that we're doing this. The only thing is they include an audio commentary and a replay, so you just play the audio commentary back, synced up with the replay, so there's not a huge video file, because not a lot of people have the ability to do video the way we do. We just choose to do it this way, because this way you can have it both ways. You can run the video in the background and watch the thing. So, do these guys a favor. GameReplays.org. Head on over to the, uh, the the Shoutcast section of the forums. You know, if you go to the Company Heroes section and the Shoutcast section there, you can see there's a bunch of people doing Shoutcast, and they, you know, appreciate people listening to it, giving them feedback, and we'll see where it goes from there. And, you know... Everybody likes feedback. We were just talking off the air about how feedback is important to people in our position. Isn't that right, my terrible co-host, Vittensby? That's right. You heard me. Terrible in the sense of, oh, you don't want to cross him. He's terrible, Vittensby. Urgh. Not as in you're bad at anything. But you're like, urgh. <laughs> Weakest name ever. <laughs> 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 but, uh, I didn't make up one beforehand. I'm sorry. That's all right, Bridger. I think it's been 36 weeks, not 35. So Did I plus say 30, you're down 35? With the, plus you're coming down with the fever, so I understand. Uh, I understand. Well. But uh, no, thanks for the pleasant introduction of uh, myself and two good friends of mine, uh, X and Turbin Rogers. As uh, Bridger just said, they're both senior shoutcast uh, mods on game replays, which was the position that that I had on that site uh, before I left not too long ago and they were doing a great job holding down the fort of the uh, shoutcaster staff over there so they said hey Vinsby we got this crazy long replay on uh, Samoa so will you take a look at it and I said well you know what guys it's about time so this is a crazy long replay. Um, I've heard it's a real VP war on uh, Samoa. Oh, those are the best kind, though. Yep. And Exendrip's playing Axis. Don't know the doctrine he went. And Rogers is playing Allies. So We'll see and, how it goes. Uh, we'll see how it goes, yep. Yeah. So just briefly, I wanted to mention, everybody does like feedback. I was saying that before. We like to get feedback because, like I said, we do read all of your emails. So if you have any questions, comments, criticisms, do we talk too much before we actually get into the replay? Send us an email. Uh, Tales of T A L E S O F at gamefire dot com. Tales of at gamefire dot com. Go ahead and send us an email. Drop us a line. We really appreciate. It. Another way you can send us feedback is go to the website tales of dot tsncentral dot com. Should be up fairly soon. And from there, you will be able to see a link on the right hand side to a survey that you can take to help us out. This survey will help us potentially get an idea of what our listeners want us to work on in terms of how we can make the show better. It will also give us some demographic information, completely anonymous, about how we can uh, improve our potential for advertising. You know, we can take this demographic information and say, hey, you know, we got this great show. we got a lot of listeners. We'd like to uh, maybe make it better with some better equipment for making the video better, but we need money. So... We go to some advertisers and say, hey, you can put some stuff on our show. We've got a lot of people between 18 and 21, 22, blah, blah, blah. Here's what we got. So, again, we ask that you take this survey. Feel free to not answer any questions that you don't feel comfortable answering. You don't want to answer your income. Don't answer your income. Whatever. Abstain from anything you don't feel comfortable with. Take five minutes. Help us out. We'd really appreciate it. And we want to show our appreciation by giving you guys another video replay review. Now, I mentioned this last time. If we get to 750 surveys done then we will give you an extra video re replay review one of these weeks. We'll just pop out two of them instead of one uh, to show our appreciation for you guys helping us out taking these surveys, uh, taking the survey. So right now, I'll let you guys know we do have an update. As of June 1st, 2007, we have 550 surveys. And right now, being the 16th, uh, there is a very good chance that more people have uh, put in surveys since then. So, 
I think this is getting very long, so I just wanted to mention one more thing. Uh, we're still looking for your favorite moments, so if you have a favorite moment from a past Tales of Heroes episode, be it the audio or the video, send us an email, talesof at gamefire.com. Let's get this thing rolling here, Vittensby. I, I, I have my favorite Tales of Heroes moment just to start it off right. right. I remember a long time ago, and let's just delay this for another 20 seconds, shall we? Um, <laughs> Long time ago, we were bitching about why it is barbed wire and sandbags. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the reveal, that was my favorite moment of all time. Reveal cloaked units. That was good. I still I feel like I could have done it better. I, there was so I much believe more it was Bridger doing, uh, you know. This is barbed wire. No, 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 it was better than that. Uh, you know, it was like, we're getting, some guy at HQ, I think it was, was like, you know, we're getting a radio call coming from the east uh, side of Lorraine. Uh, he's like, uh, yeah, what there's two, two, two cloaks stormtroopers coming on the east side of the rain. Who is this? This is barbed wire. No, 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 you did it like this. What the hell is barbed wire? What? No, 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 you did it like this. Like, this is barbed wire. Oh, man, it was great. <laughs> All right. Who? Anyway. This is barbed wire. All right. So, yeah. Reminiscing for was, another uh, show. That's what we're asking yeah. for people to send this stuff in so we can create some cool stuff with it. Five second mark here. Ready to go in five, four, three, two, one. Unpause. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. And we are getting ready to go. Let's see what kind of opening we have for the Americans. We have a barracks opening. That's This is one of those cases where it actually, you you, you might see a barracks or a weapon support center opening. I think uh, Samoa is one of those maps that really, I think, can be fairly uh, good to both sides. I really can't believe I just used good as the best adjective I could come up with at the time. But you know what I mean. You know what I mean. So we'll see That's how things right. proceed. We've got a two pioneer start and a one engineer start. So you were talking about this on the last show that the one engineer start is becoming more and more popular. So you can get your your second rifle squad out or your second jeep or you know your second unit basically out faster. Well, actually, it was a strategy that kind of came out first on Ingaville. Um, I think Sefa made post saying that he's been trying it out in Samoa, which was a map that he played at least 500 games in beta and probably played a thousand games on. So I take his word for it and said, it doesn't really make any difference uh, which opening that, uh, and I think I'm quoting him right on this, uh, which opening you go with. Uh, but on Angaville, it could be an advantage. It was really something that favors Axis, though, um, just on Angaville so you can compete with the rifle jeep opening. Uh, which is pretty com com uh, common on that. Um, this is the first Samoa we replay we've had, I think, since they changed up the whole way that barbed wire works uh, <laughs> in uh, in uh, in Company Heroes now. Of course, you can get free wire cutters from the start, and uh, no more Samoa pins, so to speak. But that doesn't mean do it's not useful. That, yeah, I do see that X and Turb is still uh, doing that barbed wire off the little river point, and uh, that's a pretty common tactic, and I definitely agree that that's a good way of doing it, because riflemen, if they go straight through the center, will either go that way or, you know, try to swing around uh, to the, through the middle VP, and it looks like he is doing a classic Samoa pin, so... Um, we'll see how that'll, if he's going to want to float an MG down there, or... Yeah, not quite the uh, classic planning. Samoa pin, but he's putting it in the that upper building. I think the classic one would be put it right in the building near the Allied Bridge, yeah? Um, you mean... The machine gunner? Oh, no, well, you move, you work your way there. Oh, but okay. Yeah, that's, that's the overall objective. Gotcha. Uh, it's interesting. I mean, I... I played around with capping the plus five munition point right outside my base a lot with the allies in the south, and I just find it's a really just a waste of time. Um, and uh, I, I usually like to retreat my squad um, that was usually capping something. Um, Did you say the plus five near the base? Yeah, the plus five that, that Rogers just capped, and just just cap the plus oh, ten. Oh, okay. Um, but then again, it seems like both players are doing kind of the same opening strategy relatively in the center, capping the plus five munitions, so that evens out. Yep, so it looks like it's fairly even thus far, but it, the Axis so far have pretty much total control uh, over the plus 16 points. They're, they haven't captured them yet, but they've they've put down, he's, uh, he's put down wire, x has put down wire here, so he's basically locked off this plus 16 that's on the island. He's got a machine gunner guarding the plus 16 that's up here. And it looks like he's using barbed wire actually to a very good effect to force his enemy to run somewhere near this building. And if they, you know, are forced to go near that building, they're going to be having to face a machine gun. So 
he's created a choke point with the barbed wire, which is something that I always thought w is what would result from the use of barbed wire rather than what we found it being used for, you know, to just completely block off an area, you know, a half a minute into the game. But we'll see how these Volks are not going to be too happy against yeah, three was, rifle squads. Say, Don't, not uh, even putting him in the building is going to help. He needs a machine gun out here, like, right now. And it looks like he's know, building something. Is he building one? Uh, yes. He just popped out with a machine there gun. I was about to say, holy rifle spam. We need a machine gun there. But, uh, th it's going I the wrong way! I see this every once in a while in the forum. Someone asking, what is rifle spam? Uh, it, this is rifle spam. Yeah. I mean, just pure, unrelenting, unre just all rifles. I mean, you don't even bother with the Jeep half the time. And we'll see if Rogers wants to fully upgrade him or if he's just going to uh, tech up so he doesn't have to deal with the threat of uh, Tier 3. That was actually a good maneuver, though, assaulting that because that was the weak link so far in the Axis line was this strap point that was connecting everything they had uh, because they still haven't connected the left side at all. They were just locking that down early. They weren't focusing on capturing the points because they figure once you get the territory, you can capture the points at will with one Pioneer squad in the back. But at this point, the rifles have completely shut down the right side, and I think that was exactly the right thing to do. I think x Interp spent so much time putting out that barbed wire on the left, creating a very nice choke point that he did not have any resources to fight on the right side, so being aggressive was probably the best thing Rogers could have done in that situation, and he's taking complete advantage of it now. Yep. Hopefully he'll get early grenades uh, with his strategy. It just seems like x is kind of down a little bit on on capping right now. Um, Rogers preferred to, you know, riflemen cap faster, so the fact that he took an initial hit because he didn't get two uh, engineers, an extra engineer, but uh, now you know that rifleman can cap faster than engineers and Volks for that matter. Uh, he's able to pretty much take over the entire map uh, really easily. It's just unfortunate grenades that Exeter had not capped that plus 10 munitions in the upper left well, We've got grenades. Yet. We do. Yep. Oh no, we've got also machine gun shooting at a unit in a building? Nope, not quite. Only when it gets out. Yeah, he should he should consider getting his uh, MG out of that building. Um, He's got his Volks building a uh, a very nice barbed wire wall to try and prevent grenades from taking that machine gun out. If he continues it over to uh, the stone wall over here and then across to the church, he can really make it hard for somebody to grenade this machine gun. And I think that's exactly what he's going to try and do with this barbed wire, is it's not to prevent people from going through there. The machine gun will stop them, but it's to prevent people from trying to take out that machine gun. Now we've got one pinned. I don't think putting the Volks in that building was necessarily the best idea, but we'll see how it, how it plays out. It's actually playing There's out okay. Oh, no. No, it's not. It's bad. It's very bad. We've got another Volk squad, though. That's going to help. Yeah, he really needed to relocate that MG. Um... Once riflemen get into that upper, the building of the riflemen just were in. I think he finished mm -hmm. off that squad. Wasn't there one that came uh, around the corner? Never mind, never mind. No, no he, he moved it. He moved it. But, you, I mean, hope, ideally, if he wanted to keep it in there, he could have had, you know, MP40s on his Volks. Um, but it's really dangerous once allies. I'm not sure quite why Rogers took it out of that building. Um, that definitely would have lured the fire from the MG. And there's going to be a... Ah, these grenades. Ow. Yep. So, um, but and, uh, it's, uh, uh oh, retreat. uh oh, Next retreating through the machine gun battle. fire. This isn't going to be good if it switches around. Nah, it's too late. It's not going to be able to take out too many of them, but he's effectively got the Samoa pin down now. He's still got a few units behind him, but, uh, Rogers very quickly tried to counterattack against that machine gun and just was completely unsuccessful. I think. Uh, he, it's, it, it seems like he should have been able to flank that machine gun easier with the grenades, but he ran into the Volks, and I guess he just didn't want to risk losing, you know, a squad if he charged the corner of the Volks and just sacrificed a squad to kill that, to, to hurt that machine gun. Because sometimes it takes two instead of if one. If you grenade. notice, we have uh, tank traps and sandbags yeah. up on the right-hand side bridge, and if you look on the left, you have tank traps and sandbags by the bridge for the uh, for Rogers on the left side of, of his bridge. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, is this how people are playing nowadays? It's been a little while since I've been doing, you know, heavily contested 1v1s, but... Uh, nice getting wow. out of there. He, he anticipated that one a mile away, and unfortunately, Rogers didn't cancel the grenade. 
Because I think if you give anybody, if you give them an order before they actually get to the point of throwing, you're still in good shape. Unfortunately, now that machine gun... Oh, but he's got another one covering it! That's right. Okay. That machine gun's probably not going to hurt... No, it only lost one guy. That still sort of goes with the theory that a bigger building will not uh, take as much damage from a machine gun. I think it's because the MG is actually firing from the other side. Yeah. Normally, they'll chuck it right at that guy, and you'll you'll get pwn sword. Um, so, I'm not sure why Rogers is fighting this battle in the center. Um... It's not a bad idea per se, but I think bringing up a squad of engines to try to cut that wire would have might been a might have been a little bit a little bit smarter. He but, lost the uh, squad in the, the church, did he? Or did he hit? No, he, he lost the machine gun in the church. He had to move the other one in there. Yep. Now. He oh. Has one. Ouch. Ouch! That hurt a lot. He's gonna lose that one too, real quick, unless he moves it. Yep. And that's why Rogers was fighting that battle. <laughs> yeah, he did actually come out on top there. Wow, that's impressive. And meanwhile, <laughs> Hexenterp managed to stop the complete pin of his own base. Uh, just before the sandbags were finished, he managed to do that. So it looks like, is he going to be able to go through there if he gives him an order? Will they actually be able to fit through? Or does that sandbag make it too close of a fit to the... to the? He just got owned. Yeah, that's that's what I have to say about that. Yeah, it's uh, he can't get through. So. Oh wow, wow. Is it that's Goliath time? <laughs> it might be Goliath time. Yeah. Um. So, what do we have here? Well, Exenter should be capping that plus ten munitions. Um. And he is. He's sending a Volk squad over there. Wow, that's really bad. Ten yeah. minutes in the game to have your bridge totally blocked off with take traps and yeah um but that's what happens sometimes when you switch sides like you did early on in Samoa. uh he did he did decide to go blitz do you have any uh company choice from rogers yet uh don't think so i don't see any any overt sign i have two cps armored operations i heard him just uh purchase uh raid there it is yeah i he's got crew repair vehicles now Okay. So, Yar, he went left side. Left side, yeah. Alrighty, that's interesting. So no early Allied War Machine OP ness. Yay! <laughs> um, well, it looks like Exenterp is making a pretty big push on the side. Yeah, wow. He doesn't, doesn't have his MGs deployed, but. Uh, I wonder how, yeah, I if he know. knows how vulnerable oh, the opponent is. Oh man, you can't sneak that many guys through the middle of the spot. <laughs> Apparently not. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, set up in the middle of the street. This doesn't look like a good idea. What he really needs is a flamer on one of those pioneers because his machine guns are going to be great if he can get them in the building and hit Volks in the open. But as soon as they get in a building like this, he's got an uphill battle. Agreed. He could really use some yeah, flamers. Flamer, early flamers are are pretty good. Pretty good use of first 50 munitions, especially before you can go into, into tier 2. Someone was had uh, asked on the forums, I don't know if you saw this post, but about uh, giving Volks Grenadiers grenades. Yeah, I don't and like I, that idea at all. I don't like that idea, and it looks like Exenter took our, our divine advice and uh, just got the flamethrower. Divine? Saying, you know, did you just update, upgrade us to gods? Did I? Oh I think my you god. Did. <laughs> our, I, did, I did say our divine advice. Okay, our uh, underling advice. That, uh. Yeah, he broke my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, the grenades? Damn it. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, yeah, put your guys in a burning building. That's fantastic. It might work. I don't know. He's, it doesn't seem like he's able to shoot out that side of the building because of the flames. Oh, and he loses it. Ouch. Uh, uh, he did a lot of damage with those flamers. I wouldn't say that was the best ending for them, but. In that building, not bad, not bad. He's going to have to try and save that other squad. Uh. Ooh, nice prediction. Got it in there right at the beginning. Yeah, Exenture pretty much lost everything, and Rogers has to reinforce his squads. And uh, not sure, what's he have coming out? A Sherman? Uh, the Tank Let's Depot? Let's find out. We've got the Tank Depot working on a Sherman indeed. And we have a Puma coming out on this side. Um, I think people have forgotten, well, not everyone, but... Uh, forgotten to OP their fuels, and it doesn't seem like Rogers has forgotten to do that. I mean, back in, you know, when it was 
1.2 with you know tier three versus armor company. Um, OPing fuels was pretty important, especially for Axis to uh, yeah. keep up with the lack of need. But I think recently I, I've been noticing people aren't OPing their fuels quite as much, and that's definitely in the long run going to hurt Exenturb right now. He's only has plus 21 income and uh, plus he's got a total of about 70 fuel, so he can get one Stug and then, you know, not really going to be able to afford that Puma or Stug every minute. Um, so, yeah, hopefully that won't make too much of a and difference. did you say he chose a Doctrine yet? Yeah, he went Blitz. Blitz, okay, so he is going to have the opportunity for Panzer Shreks as well. Yep. Sort of the and classic yeah. Blitz strategy of skipping Kriegs, and you get the advantage of getting out a Stug early and also some Panzer Shreks to go with it. Exactly. Um, we do have the gunner upgrade, um, the 30 cal on top of the 50 cal? M4 Sherman, or is it a 50 cal? Yeah, I think they so. all look the same to me. But well, that's uh, because yeah. the difference is like millimeters. So. I thought the quad was the was the 50 cal, and then the the gunner on that. Oh, you is know, it might be. You might cal. be right. Yeah. Uh oh. Uh oh. How did that Sherman miss? My God. It must have just hit hit that fence or something. Yeah. Well, that Sherman's got a bad cannon. <laughs> yeah. Misfired. Okay, Send I it want back to the Relic shop. to fix Get that a new misfire. One. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of M10s doing it. Sherman just did it. Every damn tank does that. I don't know what it is. They but fire like, it and just, then it doesn't actually shoot anything? It's like, boom, 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 boom. Oh, okay, if after the fifth time, it finally shot, right? That's what M10s, you know, all the time do that. And uh, I'd like to see that being fixed. But we do have level one veterancy on infantry, so... Uh, Exeter might be wanting to use Pumas and Stormtroopers. Stormtroopers to counter the Shermans and Pumas to counter uh, the Riflemen. But that might not be his plan, but we'll see. Uh, he is getting a Stug. It's interesting. I mean, he's went Blitz, but we haven't seen any Stormtroopers. And I know people have been complaining about Storm Spam every once in a while. So I'm not quite sure why he went level 1 veterancy without investing at least in two squads of Storms. Good question. So far, we've got three, almost three CPs, two and a half, to uh, get towards Pershing. So we got to get uh, it's four CPs at, uh, to actually get the Pershing, right? And then it's yeah, two and one, yeah, yeah. Trying to one remember. thing I'm really happy to see is that Rogers is using a triage center. Oh yeah, uh, that's pretty key nowadays because a lot of Axis players get veterancy. Um, on all their infantry, of course, because it's a global upgrade, um, and you really need that triage center to combat in the long run with, uh, you know, level one, level two, and then you know, level three veterancy on infantry is just ridiculous. So uh, he's bringing and his we have mob. The level two veterancy coming out with, and he's popping a squad of storms. I there it is. Or no, that was was that level one on the stug? Yep, it was. So Exenturb's doing a good job of making use, and he's making me proud of uh, veterancy. <laughs> the veterancy. Yeah. So here comes the rifle horde. Yeah. The mass of Russian, I mean Americans, in this oh, uh, super crazy push. Remember we had that push a while back? <laughs> Somebody charged across the bridge with like five squads of riflemen into the same machine gun. I don't remember what, what, what game that, that was. That was, that was me, crazy. Bridger. Damn you. <laughs> what? It was me. It was you? Oh, that's yeah, right. It was, it was, your a, game it was the Stalingrad more. episode. That's right. So, but we do have. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we do have Rogers yeah. using an old trick that Ahenian, well, I can't give credit to him, but this is what he kind of made popular, laying crap load of mines on the center road of uh, of uh, Simwa. So, oh, wow. good use of mines. Yep. I Always see have, two I of them think, there. I see at least two. Might be another one. That's usually a good place. Another place is right between um, the, the main building here on the road between that and the tree. The building with the, the with the gunners in there. So let's find out what's going on over here. That Puma's doing a good job of just messing things up. But uh, uh, oh no, two gone. stickies. Yeah, that's gone. Now we're in trouble. Destroyed engine. And people say that Panzerfausts are not useful. He's got a hundred and I think he's gonna do it right now. There you go. That's when you use a Panzerfaust. Very Perfect. nice. Perfect. It's not going to get out. Out of control. And the gun. Oh, my God. 5% bug saves the Stug, ladies and gentlemen. Fug, whatever. Because um, I definitely saw a oh, main gun was destroyed. Engine was destroyed. Did you see any penetrating shots that did nothing? No, I don't chance? think it was. I, I don't it might have just I been... Just, uh, I think it was a legitimate save. Okay, it might have just been a legitimate 
five percent feature then. That was that was the five percent feature. That was the five percent feature, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. So, but uh, people say that Panzerfaust is useless. Actually, Rogers, I do believe you were saying that on the forums today. No pun intended, but ah. uh, no, but uh, yeah, that's a perfect usage of a Panzerfaust. Um, in fact, uh, to counter fast quads, oftentimes I know I would try to do like a triple Panzer Faust <laughs> if I didn't have uh, enough storms to do it. Yeah, I mean it's it's expensive, but that could be a huge detriment if he invested so much money into getting that quad out there early. He sacrificed so much in the process that you know if you can deny him that, you can retake map control real quick, and it's completely worth you know 150 munitions. Exactly. One thing that I always thought was interesting was, although I can understand why my, your own mines don't blow up when you walk over them, I always thought it was an interesting design decision. I'd definitely have to ask someone about that, why why uh, they decided to make it so that your own, even though you know where your own mines are, why when you walk over them it doesn't do anything. What's your thoughts on that, while this battle unfolds? Well, I think it would make mines, from a design decision, it would make mines less useful if, you know, everything that you had, when it walked over them, it would blow up. You know what I mean? If there was... Oh, nice shot. Got two of those storms. And now we've got actually two storm squads here, it looks like. But, well, I mean, yep. like I was saying, I think it would just make mines so much less useful compared to uh, what they are now. Like, they're, I think they're at the perfect spot right now. They're not, like, completely spammable. And look at that. What are you doing? Somebody fire that driver! He must be drinking or something. That's ridiculous. Uh oh. Here comes hey, look, I got a Sherman up ahead. I'm gonna moon you with my tank. Ah, look at that ass. Ha 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 ha. Hans, did you see what I. Turn the tank around, for God's sake! Alright. So. <laughs> Bundle <laughs> that was made. just ridiculous. Uh, Funny Nate, look out. Bundled Nate, bundled Nate. Oh, I, I was hoping they'd run right into it as they were retreating. Because grenades can get some pretty lucky shots. Oh, that was an unnecessary retreat of the storms there. They both hit the retreat button at the same time. Yep. That was unfortunate. And that's why, ladies and gentlemen, sometimes it's not good to use control groups. But uh, we do have a, a stun on the field, which uh, definitely will be able to... Well... <laughs> stun things? <laughs> if uh oh stun, if he Both wants mines got blown, looks like. Right now, you know, don't, don't mind the uh, rifle horde with sticky bombs, but I think it'd be cool if uh, he does a little base raiding with that, a little, you know, at least try to take care of that MG emplacement. Uh, maybe scout it with the Puma a little bit, keep your storms on the bridge when they get back there from the HQ, and try to move in, just cause a little bit of, a little bit of carnage, but I think it's always safer to use that in a defensive manner. Um, but I, I like, you know, throw it. Like, we'll be fighting in the center of Somal. Who was it? Tamiya, I think it was. We had this great great game we played against each other, and I think I was raiding his base every once in a while with studs. Just, this was like, I think, one point, early 1.6, 1 and uh, that was a really fun game. So, right, I think, is, like. This is a moment called Pathfinding for the Win. <laughs> Sta and the retreating Volks were, like, just kind of standing, dancing around each other. <laughs> dancing around each other for like 10 seconds like the, the stug turns and the volks go the other way and then it turns and they go that way and just kind of you know having a little bit of square dancing on the field now might be a very good time for the oh no a mine right in front of all those defenses or should i say behind that was a very good place to put it at this point it looks like he was going to try and run it over with the puma there to get rid of those Let's uh, see sandbags uh oh should he has a destroyed engine no that's uh, oh, not quite. I think that was just not almost enough, but not quite enough damage to kill it. So, yeah. now we've got a per Holy crap, I didn't even see we've got a Pershing already. 7 CP Pershing, wow. and uh, Exitrip's still two points away, even though he clearly has an advantage. Um, he really needs those storms to get back to the front lines oh, yeah. immediately. I mean, this is what we were talking about, I think, a couple of episodes ago is the problem with the 7 CP Pershing is not that it, you know, not that it's 7 and the Tiger is 8. The problem is there should be some counter to the Pershing that you do not need the Tiger for. You know, you do not, there shouldn't be a Doctrine-specific counter. That shouldn't be the only way to defeat a Pershing, in my opinion. I think that Stugs need yeah. to be more effective, and I think that will be part of, part of the answer, and I think 8 CPs will also give you enough time to field more anti-tank weaponry. AT guns need to be more effective. We talked about that in the show. So if you don't uh, listen to the audio show, you're missing out on a lot of cool stuff. Highly recommend it. Yep. 
Well, one of the biggest issues was the 1.5 changed the penetration rate to yeah. somewhere right. It used to be like 20 or 30 percent, all the way up to 70 or 80 percent. So that's really, I think, one of the issues is maybe is if they would tweak that a little bit. I think, and there's another Pershing misfire for the win. Yeah, but at the same time, two Panzer Shreks, both non-penetrated. That's one all right. Of them might to compensate, missed. Rogers also is getting the crawl bug. Why is that not fixed? I'm going to be a little critical, I think, in this episode. <laughs> there's two things that are bothering me when I watch this replay that I know every player deals with. At least if they play ten games, you're nice least stuff like this. So uh, hopefully the crawl bug will one day be fixed. Uh, Wow, anyone. a missed sticky. That's another one that almost never happens, but he missed the sticky. The sticky landed on the ground. <laughs> yeah. Man, the, Rogers uh, is having the worst yeah. luck this game. He's got a double crawl bug. He's got a crawl bug at the north, which now apparently is uh, has fixed itself. Well, I, I find if you bug. give them orders like right next to them and they go there and then they'll stand up and then you can give them. Like if you just do that, something like that will clear it. Um, at this point, we're still in the red, as it were, for X Interp. 420 to 255, he's down by approximately 200 or so here. Closing the gap, maybe it's about 350 now. Uh-oh. I also saw another post on how to get rid of the crawl bug. I've heard anything from shift a couple times, to alt-tab, to click on into cover, to attack move. Ladies and gentlemen, I've tried them all, and uh, your best bet is to try them all, because one or the <laughs> other, or the other, or sorry, or the other might fix it. Yeah, there I have been it. times where I've been like, shift, 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 attack, A, A, look, click, move, oh, click on the cover, it's not working off of it, alt tab, oh god, it's still there, five minutes later, oh, I just hit the retreat button. I think we got a but, repair uh, bunker coming up here soon, over oh, by the plus 16, that, that's a really nice place to put it, actually. Uh, yeah. in, in the situation where he lost the middle. Even if he didn't lose the middle, that's still a good position to have it, even if you control the middle. Um, but I, can, I mean, like you were saying, I can see it right now, some programmer going in, all right, <laughs> I'm going to make so half a, half a percent of the time when units get suppressed, they don't come out of suppression. And then I have ten ways that it can be fixed, but only one of them works in any one game. Ha <laughs> ha, figure that out, Vittensby, you bug hunter you. From back in the beta, you were complaining. You know, <laughs> that's great. That's what happened, you know, so. That is that. That is, <laughs> that is how it happened. But, uh, so he's listening wow. to the show going, That was good. Crikey, they figured me out, and uh, I figured it out too. Damn it. Well, there's always the T button, the retreat. Key, <laughs> yeah, and that, that fixes it every no, time. No, sometimes well, they no. crawl back to the base. Actually, I've gotten the, I think people have gotten the crawl bug while retreating. That's even better. When you hit the T button and your rifle squad for some reason decides to crawl bug after it's actually retreating. So, and then, then of course, it'll crawl bug, but do it like, you know, like it's on, like it's doing the speed oh, walk I found back. Noah. I found Noah. Bugging. Did you? Yeah, he's flashing, but you can see him there. There, we talked about that on the last show. We had Noah Stacy on for an interview. That's his face hidden in the supply depot. Uh oh. Meanwhile, I'm missing big important stuff. Sorry about that. Huge battle going on here in the middle. Looks like they're gonna try. They're trying to take back the middle here, but the Pershing has been yet to be dented, which I think is going to be a big problem. Lost a lot of those Volk squads. A lot of those one Volk thing squads. That, one thing to note is it's not at level 3 veterancy already, and that yeah. was one of the changes that they made to kind of nerf it a little bit. And, and again, the uh, Stu is now driving in reverse. See, I think like back in the day before they fixed that whole thing where you had to use to click drag to move your tank in reverse, I think people Ooh. were a lot better with it, but... Ever since they kind of changed that, that you could just click right behind. Before, remember, Bridger used to have to click drag to move it in reverse. Well, I never used drag to click drag. Again. I would just click really close behind and do a little shift path. Yeah, as it were. Well, it, it used to do that, but you know that you know what I'm talking about. They kind of fixed it yeah. a little bit. Uh, so I think that uh, people aren't used to click, you know, shift, click dragging anymore to, you know retreat in the direction, but tanks, you know, if you guys didn't play back in the day, I guess, earlier patches, they used to be a lot harder to, to reverse, that's for sure. Yeah, but, we got a Tiger uh, have, on the field. We do, with level 1 veterancy, so that'll definitely be able to at least hold off against the purging, but as you can see now, we have two purgings, so I think this is a problem wow, that do. a lot of, yeah, a lot of, a problem that a lot of people are having issues with. Um, we've already kind of discussed this to death, but uh, is it completely OP. I think we both agreed it's not completely OP, but it certainly 
more more times than not, it's going to give you a huge advantage. Um, one thing I would have said is that Exentrip wasn't aggressive enough in the center, um, retaking the VPs, and and I really think he's too intimidated. I mean, he's sitting at 210 um, munitions um, for quite a while now around that. He could have got a Goliath and just blew through those tank traps and sandbags on the left side. Um, maybe it was a good call to wait for the for the Tiger to just roll it over, but. He was taking only, a chance. He saw those. He saw those engineers, and he still rolled right over where the mine used to be. Because as you can see here, and probably Exenter actually doesn't know this, Rogers has been placing more mines in the middle in exactly the same place he placed them before. And there's an additional one near the victory point there on the right of it. Yep. And there was one outside. There, there was one. Um, as far as I saw, that was right outside the the church, um, right at the doorstep. But I don't know if you can see that. I saw, I saw him placing it. Maybe he uh, had to move. Yeah, he might have canceled it. I don't see it now. Um, I mean, at this point, he could just send a Pioneer down there and cap that Southern VP. I mean, it's been completely undefended the entire game. Now yeah, it is because there's a Pershing nearby. But uh, yeah, that would I think Exenter might have just been a little bit too not intimidated. But I mean, he could have. I'm not going to second guess him, but I mean, he could have really uh, used those storms to take care of the sandbags. There were some things he could do. Um, the right side of the map has remained uncontested now for 30 minutes, and that could, if he does lose this game, that could have a lot to do with it. Certainly, um, the harassment um, factor was lacking there on the right side. Uh, Tiger versus what? Where's the other version? Other the other Persians one's coming on the up right. from the other angle. Yeah, that's not a bad move there. I think he moved it over there partially to be able to flank and partially to be able to defend that right-hand victory point. Now we've got a damaged engine on the Tiger. If I were him, I would uh, slowly try and back the Tiger towards the repair station just so you'd have, be able to have an easy retreat. But at this point, I don't think he... Now he probably knows, but I don't think up until this point he knew there was a second Pershing. He might have thought about it. Wow! That second Pershing's going to take this Tiger down real quick unless he moves it now. And where are those stormtroopers? Uh, they're in the graveyard. They are in the graveyard. Okay, they're dealing if with the first one. If we zoom in close, apparently, like Noah told us, there's tombstones for people that left the project with with their name on it. Yeah, rather. I can't tell. I don't think mine's at a high enough resolution or enough detail or what have you. But now we've got repairing on the tiger. That was incredibly important. The other important thing was uh, pulling those stormtroopers back to scare the other Pershing away. And the. Uh, Squad in the center just took a direct hit from, from the, the uh, from the mine that was yeah. in the ground. Ooh, infantry squad lost. He kept that squad in the church, and it seemed to... I don't know what the point of leaving that squad there was. I don't know if he forgot it or if he just wanted to buy some time. But, uh... And now his Pershing's in trouble. He's being chased by... By, <laughs> by infantry. <laughs> We're surrounded by armor, but they're chasing us! <laughs> oh, no! He's got the, the southern victory point now, like I said, so that's definitely good for him. He's going to be able to make a small amount of comeback here. Uh-oh. Uh, he's been doing a good job with that stub, but I think it's about time for the stud to disappear from the face well, here's, of the Here's an interesting question. I was just looking at that Pershing and saw that, you know, every tank has a little machine gun on it. Yeah. I know that in the earlier days of, of uh, retail, you know, tanks pretty much obliterate, every kind of tank pretty much obliterated, uh... Every every squad in like one shot, you know, Puma's instantly killing being Stugs had a bug where they were doing like 50% more damage or something. Tigers, Pershing, everything, everything pretty much used Sherman one-shotting storm squads. You know, we all heard about that. So, um, do you think now that tanks don't really do as much damage to infantry like they used to? I mean, outside of like say a Tiger or something. Um, and I think some people complained about this, that during, like, crazy battles, we're talking about something else. But do you think that that little machine gun should do a little bit more damage than it is now? Yeah, Could I wouldn't it? mind it, because it is... The hull machine gun is the one you're talking about. You can see it firing uh, down in the bottom there. There's also one on the Tiger that has a coaxial machine gun that will fire on the turret as well. And both of them do paltry damage. I mean, it's literally inconsequential. It never really would make any difference ever because of the, <laughs> you know, it's so inaccurate and even when it does hit, it does minimal amount of damage compared to anything else in the game. So Just think like 1.5 bike 
you know? Yeah. Like, type it's like, it was, it was even worse than that, I think. So, I mean, you could, you know, turn your turret the other way and, like, attack ground with a Pershing or, you know, with a, with a Sherman or whatever and, you know, just have some squads stand in front of your tank and they would just sit there and it wouldn't kill one guy for at least five minutes, I should think. I mean, that's just how ineffective they are. So I wonder, like you said, I wonder if they should uh, buff that up a little bit just to make it at least effective. I mean, I guess they put it in there just to look pretty. <laughs> they didn't want to use it as a balancing yeah. concern because they've already got the main gun. On a bunch of guns, they have the, the guns on the top. So when you throw another thing in there, it just makes it that much harder to balance. Well, you know, this thing's doing too much damage to infantry. Well, is it the main gun? Is it these other three guns on there? Do we have to tweak one of those? So, you know, I think that's, yeah, that's probably why they didn't do anything with it. And x is definitely retaking map control now, uh, which was lacking um, a little bit in the early game. But uh, it's still anyone's game. I mean, Rogers, as long as he doesn't feel that he's really pressured right now, which he really isn't for the most part um, that pressured because, you know, he still has a huge VP lead. At least, I mean, he could sit in his base probably for three, four, five minutes and not worry too much about it. But uh, let's just hope that he makes the, the right choice in attacking now rather than just, you know, waiting a yeah. little bit. Double veterancy uh, on infantry now? Yeah, double veterancy. And uh -oh, we could see a get huge a tiger shot. They're all clumped together. Why aren't you shooting? What the hell is it doing? I think he's microwing he's it too much. He's turning his body. Yeah, he's, he's trying to micro the shot. So. There we go. <laughs> there, finally shot. Oh, man. Oh, no. The storms are shooting the tiger in the side. Oh, no. Sticky bomb again. It did it twice now, it looks like. Ouch. Oh, my God. They're sh all shooting the wrong guys. Oh, now there's it's two. Do we have a second tiger ready to come anytime soon? No. Oh, nice, mi uh, nice micro with the Pershings. Pulling that one back and just sort of uh, exchanging it. Meanwhile, he's still doing constant damage to the tiger. And a lot of the, there's a nice penetration from the uh, the Panzer Shrek, but a lot of the Panzer Shreks aren't doing a whole lot of damage from the front there. They're not getting a real penetrating shot. As you can see right there, it did paltry damage. That was a good penetrating shot. And two two Pershings at half health is a lot better than a Tiger at full health, much less point ten percent. There it is. This is going to be three vet Pershing now. Big trouble, big trouble for X Interp. He's got another Tiger on the field. Unfortunately, I think he, uh, he he stalled too long. He had just pulled back a little bit, you know, given up the center for a short period of time. Maybe he would have been able to save that Tiger and come come again with two of them. He would have had a better shot, I think. Uh, I think yeah. that was a mistake, sticking around and, and sacrificing the Tiger. Yeah, definitely. Um you know, he could have tried to reverse back to his repair bunker. Yeah. Um, he was just trying to hold it off. Maybe, you know, he felt, I mean, it was re it's been a pretty long game so far, 36 minutes, so it's kind of, I wouldn't call it a really bad mistake, but that, that kind of mistake can happen. But certainly, you know, when you got two Pershings, one that's, you know, sitting at level two, oh, no. one that's sitting at level one, you don't really want to uh, risk losing your Tiger, especially when you got a second one on the way, so... Uh, but we'll see. Um, you know, meanwhile, Rogers was harassing behind the yeah, lines. Yeah, very which nice. Is exactly what you want to do. X and Chirp's definitely getting a little cut off uh, at this point, which is what he needs. And uh, Rogers is sending, is that one squad of riflemen on the bottom, on the other side of the river, to, to kind of it's two squads. go around? One it's squad two of squads, two and like, one squad of one. Yeah, that's uh, at least, I mean, I, I know like the one man army, I always comment on that, you know, the, the one guy that saved the day by capping, you know, half the side of Vangaville while the fight was going on at the other side. But, <laughs> yeah, right? That's but, what you I use mean, paratroopers for when they're no good for anything yeah, else. Realistically, at least make sure you have three guys in the squad when you do that. Because, I mean, especially because that one guy that he's capping with, I can see it now, is a double veterancy oh, yeah. rifleman. So, yeah, um, that guy should have probably been reinforced and uh, not definitely been, been reinforced. Yeah, and not just thrown away. Because that, th that's a suicide mission. I mean, I think, if, like I said, if you have at least three guys in a squad of riflemen, that's a safe bet that you can just hit the retreat button and, and get out of there without losing the squad. Um, because really, he's not trying to fight, right? I mean, he just wants to get some free caps off. So, yeah. you know, wait, wait the extra five seconds for the, you know, manpower and uh, see what happens. Um, We've got, More we're floating 1,600 manpower over here. 
on the yeah. Allies' side. I think he's just ready to call in another Pershing or two if he ever needs it at this point. Really? He's also got wow. Allied War Machine, but not enough munitions to use it. Yeah, this would be a great time to just observe it. I mean, he's, he's 1,600 manpower. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, a couple extra Shermans would be nice. I guess. But yeah. uh, realistically, bars, fuel. BARs, and uh, observation posts, which is exactly what he's doing. I mean, just put oh, OPs wow. on, oh, on man. everything on your side of the river. Oh, no, this is going to be the end. No, it's going to be able to back up, but it's trapped because of the... Because, no, it, it can run those over. Never mind. It's not going to get out of there. It's not going to get out of there. No way is he going to back out of the whole thing main gun destroyed oh no it's going all the way back to the base the tiger's gonna chase it come on i can't believe it i can't believe that was a perfect ambush with those stormtroopers that got it down to one percent health pershing got out of the way how oh, did the other one die triple vet got killed in less time than it took to almost get the other one down to ten how did that happen what what the hell did he just get like three critical hits in a row with the tiger I, I would say and so. And every Panzer Shrek hit ex and penetrated? Wow! And this Instantly. is why Rogers was saving up the manpower, because he yeah. was basically, I mean, he could lose it and just call in probably another one, yeah. right? He's probably got, what, like 850 manpower? He's got 930 him. right now, so... Close enough, but, uh, yeah. He's gonna try and save this Tiger. Good move. Very good move. Very nice micro around the barracks there. It's gonna prevent it from being hit in the rear a little bit. Now he's back on the, the road, so he's going to be able to accelerate away from those chasing riflemen. How much munitions does he have? 242, just a little bit short oh, now. Just under the Allied War Machine. Allied War Machine. Yeah. Now, he should, be, uh, he should be recovering the Tiger and the Stu if he can. Uh, I mean, Exerterp should be. If he's got any free Pioneers anywhere just sitting over there, really, that would be... Very helpful to him, I think, getting those extra munitions for Panzer, Panzer Faust or uh, even more uh, Panzer Shreks if he decides to go that route. He's still holding two of the victory points, though. He's changed sides. He lost the south. He's got the north victory point now. Yeah, and this this is too much. I mean, he's he's gonna run right through the center and get get killed. There's no way that rifleman's gonna make it back. There's no. I'm gonna try to do a bridge. Yeah. There's no way that rifleman's gonna make it back. There. Ah. Oh! Damn just it, I just suspense, can't do this baby, you. Just building suspense, baby. Just building suspense. I agree, but... Okay, so we have a Calliope on the field. I mean, really, Rogers at this point is lacking capping power. And, I mean, he needs to have a couple more squads of riflemen. He's getting bars. He has no riflemen. <laughs> He's well, got three squads of engineers and two squads of riflemen. One isn't even full. And he's like, eh, get bars. Okay. Uh, that's cool. Well, uh, No, I mean... He's setting himself up for a hardcore yeah. rifle spam at late game. Even though he has spam. no resources at all for pop cap. He's got 52 or 57. He's about to lose a good chunk of it. There it goes. He's at pop cap now. Really? He, he just, that's funny because Exenterp was at pop cap just a second ago. So this is going kind of switching back and forth. I'm not sure why uh, Exenterp's building that bunker over there. Um, but uh, who knows. Did we miss a Calliope barrage? I know we just missed a Calliope barrage. Oh, wow, yeah, holy crap. Was there a... I mean, what bunker? Oh, that bunker, okay. He's probably getting two repair stations, I guess. Wow, did, did those folks just destroy an observation post? No, <laughs> By themselves? Pershing did. Oh, the Pershing <laughs> did. I was going to say, yeah. how the hell did that happen? I was pretty sure MP40s were pretty crappy against observation posts, but, you know, you never know. Now, we've got tons of fuel on the Axis side now. He must, because he's got both fuels almost. Well, he's about to have both fuels coming in. How much fuel does he have? Exinger? Yeah. Uh, 500. Oh, wow. He could... Oh, here comes another Calliope barrage. Oh, that church is getting destroyed. How the hell is the roof staying up? Look, there's no support. <laughs> I love that. That's fun stuff. Uh, GG Noah. <laughs> but... There's plenty of resources. He could be at uh, level 2 veterancy on his tanks and level 3 on his infantry any time now. That would be very useful. And, I mean, at this point, he could also afford to get uh, a Panzer Command and start grabbing some uh, Knight's Cross. That would really round him out at this point. He's got two Tigers. He's got the Panzer Shreks available. And uh, he, if he had some Knight's Cross, that would basically put him in a great position to fight against bars. 
Panzer Commands for the win! Uh, but, uh... We'll see, we'll see, but I definitely agree that level uh, level 2 and 3 veterancy on his Tigers is pretty much attainable at this point, because he has 600 manpower, uh, Comcraft Center should be upgrading, oh, I good. mean, he does have two Tigers on the field, yeah, he didn't lose that, so, and here comes the base rush from hell, never want to see three Shreks. Oh my god, he lo did he lose the, uh, Calliope, the Calliope? Yeah. I don't even see the wreckage. I would love to see Rogers call in another Calliope right now, and he then can't? just barrage oh, the hell out of that. Wait, he did! <laughs> there it is! <laughs> You're right! <laughs> I didn't Bridger, even see that. Or is that the same one he just backed up? Is one. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, the humanity! Look at those storms! Stay alive! Through that barrage! And that's why the Stormtrooper is overpowered! <laughs> At level 2 veteran C. And he's got, still... Six tracks in the base. Oh my god, this this is terrible. This is like he's gonna destroy the entire base and, and now we've got, you know, the Pershings are like, oh my god, get the hell back there. He's got capping power, he's out there capping points. So we'll see if this makes a difference. You better build Oh shit, we have Blitzkrieg. Oh nice! Oh snap, here come the Pershings. A little late to the party at this point, I think. So, at this oh, point, man. he's going to lose that headquarters. He better build the MG emplacement on the field right now. Seriously. Uh-oh. Yes, we did. We lost the, the bunker on the right. I mean, the uh, the MG emplacement. How could he possibly? No! Look at the headquarters! It's at 10%! Don't worry about the Allied Pershing! war machine for the win! All right, there you go. Yeah, shoot the headquarters. Oh, Come yeah, on. if he would have got rid of that headquarters... Oh man. He might yeah, still that was do a it. Bad call. He did it! I can't believe it. He killed the engineers too. But we have a Pershing on the field. That must have been from Allied War Machine? Or no, he must have just bought that. Just before the headquarters died, he got another. No, it Pershing. was from Allied War Machine. Oh, it was from Allied War Machine. It, it, it stays on, but definitely if he would have got rid no, of no, that. No, 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 because I just he heard he said we have a Pershing on the field. I think that only happens when you purchase it, isn't it? No, no. no. Oh, okay. I, I, I never heard it say that when um, just when Allied War left? Machine. And that is the definition, my friends, of Panzer Shrek presence. And it, that was uh, some of the next of his show yes. cast, so he just left four Panzer Shrek presents right at his doorstep. <laughs> Panzer Shrek presents. That's the pee pee right there. Uh oh. This tiger's all like, oh, get me out of here. He's backing up to the repair stations, which is obviously a good move, but not much left to put together with that tiger to help out. I mean, he's got no Panzer Shreks left. That was total base rush. He was just, if he had just left that one tiger. Oh no, there was a supply depot in the back, so that kept him on the field too. All kinds of engineers retreating back to the base. We need again, we need more Pershings. We're missing uh, the VPs. I mean, we got 141 oh, wow, yeah. right now, so. Ticking down for Exeter, right? As far as I can see, because the bug that's still not fixed after two patches later. Yeah. The replay system. That Pershing might go down. That Tiger's got a good chance of killing the Pershing, I think. A couple more deflections that the Tiger takes. Uh-oh, he switched targets. That's it. But we got another yep. Tiger on the field. Uh-oh. Uh-oh! Yeah, imagine if those were at level 3 vet, though. Woof. That would have been uh, pretty brutal. The Tigers? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. Meanwhile, we're trying to get the HQ back up. Uh oh, we lost main gun on the Pershing. Out of control. That tiger's gonna take that one out too. Uh oh. Rogers, when you build that HQ up again, I want you to get another NG squad. No, two more NG squads since you got he's got two there right now, right? Pick up each one of those Panzer Shreks. I want to see the NG squad Panzer Shrek Armada take out a tiger. <laughs> that would be great considering the tigers really hurt now. Come on, Panzer Faust! Panzer Faust the Pershing, kill it with the it is! Here it comes! Oh, well, I guess that's a good thing. He didn't kill it because <laughs> 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 it's a good thing the Panzer Shreks, uh, the Panzer Faust sucks. No, no, don't shoot it! No, attack ground! Why are you driving your Panzer Shrek? No, the Pershing's like, oh, I'm gonna drive it in circles so the Tiger can't hit me. Oh wait, why did I activate Allied War Machine? What are you attack doing? Attack ground, attack ground. Did he just hit yeah, it with another Panzer Faust? Yeah, he did. Why? I thought it was funny when, uh... Why is he doing that? 
what? <laughs> Attack ground, damn it. I'm speechless. Uh, I thought I it was funny. I guess he's not paying when... attention. I think uh, it was it was Buggo that made a post about the five percent. Uh, look, he's got the NG horde, but he didn't pick up the Panzer Shrags. <laughs> Damn it, Rogers, <laughs> you fail! <laughs> I think oh, it was Buggo man. that made a post about like uh, help us fix the five percent bug, and like you know they wanted replays, and like a couple people were like, "Have you ever played this game?" Like, I take any replay. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, that just reminded me of that. Uh, I'm sorry, but man, Rogers, in the words of the great Ahenian, you fail. I can't do it as good as him, but uh, at what? To... At, at microing his Pershing so it gets no, killed. He, he fails at using these engineers oh, to pick okay. up the Panzer Shark presence. God damn it! <laughs> oh wow, he saved up that whole time he was repairing his HQ. He's like, I can't build anything. I'll just save up and get two Pershings. <laughs> He's got the what little. He's got no capping power. He's got three engineers and a, and a single bar squad, which actually might win him the game because he's taken that bar squad in the south. It means he's gonna get switched the VP back over. He's trying to push the tiger into fight here. He really should have just kept that back getting repaired. Man, we got a, we got Pershing syndrome now. Yeah. We well, he's got nothing else to build bad. at this point. If he wants to stay in the game, he's got uh you know 78 VPs. He has to push forward. He can't afford to build a building and then get stuff from the building. You know, this takes too well, long. Definitely. Um, I mean, he's only got inches, right? Yeah. <laughs> inches, man, for the win. Ah, he lost one. He's gonna lose another. Oh no! The powerful engineer hordes of death did not make it. I'm sorry to say. Come on, why did you not pick up those Panzer Shreks? Look at it, it's just beautiful. They're like one right next to the really other. That really yeah, would have helped. Yeah, that would have been helped. awesome. Uh, Three oh Panzer Shreks well. fighting would have finished off that Tiger, I think. It's pretty low on health, isn't it? Yeah. Plop up a motor pool, you know. Put uh, Get some engi get, get a quad out and transport some engineers in the back. Just the coup de grace. Engineer Panzer Shrek brush into the Axis base. <laughs> <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> that would be like, yeah. Uh, Some of your own medicine. Where's that auto save feature on Relic Online where you could save a replay right in the middle of it and then pick up from where you left off and play the ending differently? Wouldn't that be nice? That would be cool. Wouldn't it be nice if we were older and opposing fronts was out today? Etc. Exactly. <laughs> and we have the first Goliath on the field. Ooh. Where is yes. this? Ah, uh -huh, right I see it. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be fun. I want to see it kill a Pershing. Because <laughs> if they're distracted and shooting something else, there's no Top Gunner that's going to shoot the Goliath. <laughs> <laughs> wow, so let's let's keep track of these VPs. we got 78 yeah. to 124. And so. the middle is neutral now. This is <laughs> the replay from hell. All right. Uh. Yeah, this is going to be a crazy VP war. Man, Roger's He's hiding really the Goliath over get here. A, get a, well, at this point, I mean, how much munitions does he have, right? Probably like 100? 250. 250? Yeah. Definitely, it would have been worth it to build a barracks at this point. I mean, he's got the two Pershings, so, you know, build a barracks, get a rifle squad or two out, and here comes the Panzer Shrek presence. Come on, pick it up. Excellent. There you go. Um, so, finally, we got the Panzer Shrek presence in, uh, in the hands of the riflemen. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, definitely build a barracks, because the riflemen have sticky bombs, and that's exactly what, what he needs to keep those tigers from uh, from flying around the field too Ignore fast. Ignore windows sounds. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, so, but instead he calls in a calliope. Mm, I would disagree. I think definitely spending the manpower to build up a barracks and get rifle spam going. You know, right now this is all about getting the most capping power that you possibly can because he's already got the Pershings, right? I mean, that's the only reason why I'm saying this, so... I mean, he's got nades, he's got sticky bombs, he's got suppression fire, he's got fully upgraded riflemen. I mean, take advantage of it. Uh, the problem, I think, is that he's microwing this Tiger a little bit too much because the Tiger only gets repaired by those repair stations. They have a pretty long range, but he only gets repaired by the repair stations if it's standing still. Here comes the Goliath. Right I see it. Goliath. I see it. I'm watching it. Calm down. I'm keeping track. Here it comes. He's got to keep careful not to kill his own tank. Here, not to kill your own tank. 
Oh my god! It did more damage to the tiger than it did to the Pershing. You gotta be kidding me. And oh no! Oh no! Shut up! Here comes the Calliope Barrage and the tiger's in trouble because he never fixed the damaged engine from like six fights ago because he couldn't keep the damn thing still. And now we got the the Panzer Trek Presence Army over here, and the riflemen are shooting into guys and the Jello and the, the cool kids and the Pokemon. And there you go. Ah, uh, it's a coup de gras, <laughs> and there it is, right into the victory point. But wait a minute, the South was capped by the Germans, and we're still seeing the Allies tick down. <laughs> I can't believe it. Oh, we've got the center. Raise the fla Oh crap! They've taken the hinterland. But wow, nothing left in the Axis. They've lost everything except for one wow. storm squad. That was quite the turn of events. Uh, started with the Allied war machine, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, build up a barracks. Come on, Rogers. Do it. Do you it must have taken me. two of them because now there's two left. Yeah. Yeah. Let me just get my tools. <laughs> we got a storm squad sneaking around the center. I see him. And he looks like he would, my god. Oh, he's going to yeah, be he, able to take that Pershing. Yep. He's definitely going to be able to take out that Oh, Pershing. no! How did it get revealed that soon? Oh, no! He turned on Allied War Machine. Run away! Run away! There you go. That was a waste of Allied War Machine there. He's, he was hoping. He was hoping he could trick him into it. Yeah, now just go charge his base, seriously. With the Pershings? <laughs> Why not? Because there's a tiger on the field. Well, you don't pop allied. I mean, that was oh, a decent usage of it, but at least throw one of them into his base. I mean, what what is Exenterp going to get? He's already got Blitzkrieg. Experience doesn't matter at this point. I mean, maybe veterancy on his tiger, which just came in? No, he's Axis. So, you know, if you're going to pop allied war machine in a position like that, definitely just send it on kind of a suicide mission but uh you know Kamikaze! Again, the americans i can see the whole map adapting. so I, I i can see that that would be actually kind of effective whereas gotcha. rogers doesn't know that there you know all of his squads was in in his base at that point so but uh looks like this one's ticking down for uh, exeter that's for sure oh yeah now that we got 3 he's in trouble he's thrown the tiger right into the middle completely unsupported Hoping that he can do enough damage to these Pershings that are mostly uh, damaged, but he's just driving right through. Why isn't he like just stopping to shoot at one? And, and oh man, this just seems like bad micro to me. I don't know. Maybe the tank was going the wrong way, but no, it's bad micro. If now, he finishes off those two Pershings, uh -oh. oh my god, another and Allied no machine. Allied war machine. For oh, ping, putting an observation post down here on that plus sixteen. Munitions was one of the best things he could have done. Definitely. I, I mean, honestly, I couldn't agree more. Rogers' uh, OP usage is 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 borderline OP at this point. I mean, Exeter hasn't OP'd anything, and he really controlled a lot of the map. And certainly, uh, See, certainly that could have helped. Him. People say, yeah, just shoot the ground. Allied war machines not that bad. Okay, yeah, we'll shoot the ground for 45 seconds. These two Pershings with, you know, 10% health left that we can't shoot unless we'll give them a brand new one will just obliterate me, you know? I don't know. That's... It, if it lasted for 15 or 20 seconds, it might be okay. But 50 or 45 or whatever it is... There he is. He didn't manage to kill one after the Allied War Machine wore off. He meant, however, he did kill the other one before it wore off. But he's got another Tiger! Uh-oh! <laughs> this... This isn't... This isn't gonna end, dude. The middle's gonna go neutral again. We're gonna be here for six more hours. <laughs> I can't believe this. <laughs> Not likely, but uh, yeah, Allied War Machines definitely, uh, definitely needs a nerf. Well, we can't use it again. We've just got 50 reduce points the cooldown. each. I mean, you just reduce the uh, duration time a little bit. It wouldn't be so bad. But 250 I munitions. I think Exynterp's got this. He's got the capping power now. The Calliope might be able to stop a cap, though. Pretty sure the Calliope's on cooldown, but it might just be me. I don't know, did he use it before? He might have used it before. So th this is where suppression fire, you want a bar squad to roll in and use suppression fire. Um, if Rogers ends up losing this, I think the biggest thing that cost him the game, I mean, in the end, was the fact that he never rebuilt his barracks. Um, but uh, pressure, pressure, pressure. 
please turn the calliope so that it... Was that a bundled nade he threw in there? I think it was. Uh-oh! Oh no! He used his engineer squad to ninja the north! And everything is in the middle trying to help out. <laughs> They're decapping that. the middle too! All important the suppression fire. Super engineers of power have just turned everything around when all looked lost for Roger. He pulls a ninja out of the north. Now he's got the middle. That tiger's in no position to retake the middle. Nothing left. I declare it right here, right now. Rogers is about to win this game. Fantastic gameplay. Wow. Couldn't agree more. Yep. Stormtrooper is not coming with uh, Tigers really hurting Blitz unless you go for that early storm spam. I don't know. Because you think, like, every one of those Tigers that he called in back in the day, I mean, yeah, it would have cost 100 more manpower. whoop do you do I got to wait 15 more seconds. But, uh, yeah, definitely uh, <laughs> a good game indeed. But definitely that's, that's really hurting, hurting Blitz at this point. But he could have had at least 10 more squads of storms on the field, I would say. Oh, yeah. I mean, how many Tigers did he call in? That definitely would have changed this game a lot if you got storms with those Tigers. So I think that was definitely a huge change. So, wow. That was uh, quite an interesting game. 56 minutes. Uh, 59 minutes, just under, just under an hour. Um, but God, those observation posts. I mean, we got four OPs down there. So one on the fuel, and then oh, wow. two on the Three. plus ten, and then you know you got one on the plus. 16. That's how we afforded so many. Oh sure. So I mean, people say, oh yeah, Allied War Machine's not that bad in one v ones. I mean, yeah, I think it is too. I think it's bad everywhere at this point. The next patch better damn well do something about Allied War Machine. I don't care if they just lower the time by 10 seconds, at least that much. I'd really rather see it lowered by at least 20, 25 seconds or change it around so instead it gives you back like half the manpower cost or half the resources of whatever you lose. I think that would be a much better trade-off, like, you know. All right, so let's do a quick patch rundown. Bugs, I want the 5% fug bug, whatever the hell you want to call it, fixed. I want the crawl bug fixed. I want the the misfire fixed. I want 2v2 auto team, uh, sorry, range team auto match. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I want Ally War Machine nerfed. I want a fixed off map combat group. I want a fixed to right hand side of Terror. And what else? Uh, anything else to add to that, Bridger? Oh, I want Pershings to have some kind of 7, seven uh, command point change, whether it has to do with their penetration yes. and stugs. I want that I'd like fixed. to see Axis AT guns. A little be bit. better. I yeah. don't want them to be called the Sherman Tickler and the. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the, I just uh, like them the, to be in the, the same the role as the, the, the Pershing machine. back massager. I don't want it to have these <laughs> names anymore. I want the Axis 18 ET gun to be you useful just made against that shit tanks. Up. You just uh, made that shit else? up, didn't you? <laughs> what the Sherman Tickler's? Old I know one, that one. Yeah, you the, said that one before. The, uh, per the Pershing back scratcher <laughs> is, is, is all new, baby. But uh, yeah, while while you're at it, you know, give the officer the ability. The guys to in the call Pershing and, are uh, going. What was that noise? I think it was a <laughs> Pack 38. Oh, okay. Back to work. <laughs> and uh, make make. It's it like the so same that, uh, the same candor. This is the same candor as when uh, I was down in. Uh, I had a friend that went down to Rio de Janeiro, and he was in a taxi cab, and they heard like, "Holy crap! What was that?" Cab driver goes, "Machine gun." Happens all the time. <laughs> it's like it's the same thing. What was that? Pack thirty eight. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's like yeah. isn't that an anti tank gun? Yeah, but we're in a tank, so don't worry about it. <laughs> I think supply drops at this point might need a slight tweak. Um, no, maybe not that. Either either you one fifty, one maybe. Mm, no, I don't think one fifty, <laughs> but well, that could work. But I was thinking uh, this is something that Seth has definitely been saying since day one. Is that you know for Paris you should be able to probably reinforce at your HQ for cheaper. Or uh, that they're airborne right now. I think is now that it's I've been you know two months or whatever. I can think about this and see how it's been playing out. Like you know, it's a little too manpower heavy. Right side's pretty oh, good, yeah. but uh, let's see what else. Uh, come on, Bridger. This is our chance to say, hey, patch one point. I think this, this is our week. chance to end the show. Actually, if that's how you feel, my friend. <laughs> Oh, and, and nerf the Calliope some more, so Armor Company is useless.
We got We got to make sure that that. Oh happens. yeah, and and while you're at it, infantry company needs some nerfs because they're way overpowered. I mean, when you get <laughs> six howitzers in the field, nothing can stop you, honestly. And uh, <laughs> yeah. what else do we have to do? Oh yeah, the um, the Nibelwerfer definitely needs a nerf because it's just been <laughs> screaming for that since day one. It's been doing so much damage. And yeah, what else needs to happen? I'll, I'll fix the bug that axes projectile weapons like uh, mortars do more damage to your own troops than to your opponent's troops, which Battletest fixed about three, four months ago. So, uh, yeah, there's some oh, serious things that seriously. need to be changed. Seriously, I think they really need to work. They're probably not going to work on it for this, but I'd really like to see some change when it comes to the infantry AI as to, you know, when they get suppressed and they're in cover, they will crawl out of cover and take more damage. I mean, that just defies game design and logic completely and I, I just ah it makes me so mad you heard the rant about it it was like six weeks ago uh, yeah. but yeah that that's one seriously but the other one that seriously needs to be taken care of is I don't think riflemen are versatile enough I mean the Axis get a sniper and a machine gun and a bike and a you know, and 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 Volks out of their first thing. I think the the riflemen should be mechanized infantry. They come with a with like a, a jeep automatically, and uh, make sure they have they carry a mortar on the jeep as well, just you know in case. And if they could have a sniper built in with the team, that would be great. Yeah. <laughs> if you could go uh. ahead and give them ten members in a squad, that'd be great. All right, I think that's all right enough messing around for tonight's episode number 36 yes i can count great show not one gonna want this remember check out the survey at tales.tsncentral.com t-a-l-e-s dot tsncentral.com is the website we'll have that hopefully back up and running to its old self by the time this comes out if not it should be very soon afterwards i won't be bugging our site guy for that if it doesn't come up very soon there will be killings of the hamster nature he loves his hamster i'm making that up so thanks you guys for tuning in remember send us your favorite moments and any kind of feedback about what you like or dislike about the show tales of at gamefire.com t-a-l-e-s o-f at GameFire.com. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. For Vittensby, I am Bridger, signing off from another Tales of Heroes.